Sai gan ku di shi la, xie xie. On that note, hello, this is Quinn, that's Naz the iPhone guy, and this is the iOS 4.2 Beta 1 preview for the iPad. Now, this video is sponsored by Squaretrade.com, the only logical choice when it comes to choosing a warranty for your iPhone, iPod, or various other electronic device. Go to Squaretrade.com slash TSIG to save $35 off your iPhone 4 warranty. So this is, in fact, a preview of the new iOS 4.2 for iPad. It was earlier released, wow, that, that makes sense. It was released earlier this morning to developers. I am on the developer uh, list from Apple and I got this seated to me. So uh, this is kind of a demo, a little what's different, what's the same. A uh, little comparison video, so hopefully you guys can make the most of it and get what you need to get from it. Keep in mind it is beta 1, so a lot of things are still unstable and not really uh, quite on par with what they should be and uh, will be in final release. So note that as we go into it. So let's check out the lock screen. Essentially, it's exactly the same, to be honest. Um, there is the ability to create that picture frame if you want to do so. One thing I will note is I'm pretty sure this is the same wallpaper as the iPhone just enlarged because it looks a little bit pixelated. I don't know if that's the one they'll use in the final release, but uh, there is your home screen and uh, oh, as I close it, here's the home screen. Uh, everything hardware wise is the same except for your screen orientation lock. Now as most iPad users are aware of, when you slide this up and down it will lock the orientation of the screen depending on which uh, mode you have it in. In iOS 4.2 this actually changes. When you put this switch down it puts it into mute and then when you put it up it puts it into unmute just like the iPhone. So if you're um, in a meeting and you don't want to be disturbed by email sounds or something like that you can switch it down and it'll immediately go to mute. Which I shall admit is pretty handy but the volume down switch they had was not that big of a deal either. And I really like the screen lock. Now the screen orientation lock isn't gone however you do need to double tap to access this menu and then hit it from there. So it still works, it's still fine, but um, it isn't as good as I think it used to be, and I think the switch should be kind of reserved for uh, orientation purposes on the iPad. Um, I'm not a f big fan of that switch, and hopefully they switch it back uh, by the final review. So that's one thing to note. Um, down here, you ha and this is the, the one pane left, so you double tap to multitask or find your multitask apps. And then if you slide one page over or one page to the right, uh, you'll find a variety of different controls here. And they are all pretty welcomed, if you ask me. The first one is uh, brightness control. Um, there's not a ton of times when you need to use this, but I use it more often than I realize. I'm reading a blog or watching a movie and I'm going to want to change the display uh, a little bit to my liking, depending on the environment I'm in and stuff like that. And uh, also because I am not a fan by any means of the auto sensing brightness deal. That bugs the crap out of me. So I do it all manually and this uh, makes for an easier usage that way. So that's nice. You have your iPod controls here. Very basic. Play, step, skip, forward, back. Um, just like you should accept, expect and uh, know with the iPhone and iPod. Um, if it'll play because I turned the volume down. Okay. So, and then uh, you can go into the iPod itself. The iPod, for the most part, is the same, except for the fact that it does have AirPlay now. Now, what does AirPlay do? This allows you to play it through a variety of different speakers or your computers or other things such as these. So, if my iTunes library was open, and boy, do I wish it was, um, you guys could see and um, be able to control the computer from here. Now, right now, I selected Nelson Express. This is the um, the server, not the server, but the the recipient modem for our in-house stereo system. And so right now I can select that and play a song and it's going to play through our in-house audio system, which is pretty neat and pretty cool that now um, your iPad is a remote for your stereo system. So that's cool. Um, they used to have the remote app, but now it's built directly into the iPod, which I do like. Now, as you should expect, also with iOS 4, it does integrate folders, and you can fit a lot of icons in one folder. Um, I believe the limit is 20, however, I am not completely and entirely sure, but I do believe um, that it is, I believe it's 20. So right now I have 16 in the games folder. Um, just as with anything else, you can open an application, and then you'll be able to jump to another application and multitask, um, such as notes. And then theoretically, you should be able to go back and uh, get to that spot where you left off. It doesn't actually work because these aren't updated for iOS 4 quite yet, but they will be um, at one point in time. 
So as you can see, it's a little bit staggery, it's a little bit glitchy, but I can only imagine that things will get more fluid with more betas. It's not bad, but it is a little bit noticeable. If you go into settings here, it does look a little bit different. One thing I will note is that all of the buttons and all of the bars, they're really polished. They're kind of silvery looking, and uh, I found that a little bit unusual because I thought Apple was kind of moving away from that. But it looks like they're going back to the very chromatic kind of interface here. Wi-Fi tab is gonna be exactly the same, same with notifications, and brightness and wallpaper will be the same also. You can change the wallpaper just as you've always been able to do. And then uh, we'll display. You can also jump back into the settings with multitasking, very handy feature. Uh, there is the photo frame and you can choose how you want that to go about, so that's the same. Uh, down in general, it's essentially the same. We have the about sounds, um, network and a few other things like that. Uh, Bluetooth, location services, it's all essentially the same. Battery percent, um, which has been moved from usage, I think. Maybe it was down here on the iPad, but um, you go to mail, contacts, and calendars, same situation. You have uh, your signature, everything's still the same. Contact listing, sort order. I'm going to switch that right now while I'm on video because I'm going to forget. You can choose your search engine, Google, Yahoo, Bing. Um, all that is essentially the same. JavaScript, there is no Flash still in 4.2, and I'm not sure there ever will be. Uh, there's the iPod controls, the video controls, um, photos, and then notes. This is very handy and very happy for me because I am glad. I'm not a fan of any of the fonts, especially marker felt. Why do I say especially? Especially marker felt, and uh, so if you go into your notebook now, you can see that uh, the font did in fact change to Helvetica, which is a far superior font, if you ask me. So uh, there are three different fonts. All of them look pretty decent. Once again, not a fan of marker felt. Chalkboard's okay, but uh, I do prefer Helvetica over the rest. So there you go. Uh, store, and then you have all your application settings also. So that's that. Now, um, if we jump into email, you will see that the email inbox is much improved. I really, really do like it. You can jump in and see threaded emails just as you've always been able to see. And uh, that way you can see full conversations and threaded. That's pretty nice. I like that. Uh, you have the ability to delete multiple at a time or single at a time. Um, it's up to you. And uh, I don't think it should change. Uh, it's very similar to the i. Uh, it's very similar to the iPhone, but you'll be able to kind of have that same interface. Create a message. You can choose which email you want it to be from, uh, to who, and uh, CC, BC. Uh, carbon copies, all that good stuff. Subject, and then the message itself is along with the send. Um, so that's pretty much the same. All the other applications are the same. The calendar is the same. The contact list is the same. These are taking a long time to start up because they haven't yet been multitasked. Notes is also the same with the addition of the uh, ability to read notes. Um, same on the maps, you do have the Google Latitude, the kind of this fancier little toggle here, and then you have bookmarks. It's a little bit different, there's directions, it's a little bit more intuitive, but that's pretty much that. Videos, I don't have any loaded on here, but they are the same. YouTube is of course the same. Uh, iTunes is the same. It does have the integration of ping, which is a little bit handy. Um, I do like that. Actually, it doesn't yet. It will when it launches because um, they haven't created that. Since this is the beta, ping isn't integrated, but it will be when uh, iOS 2 4. Point, excuse me, iOS 4.2 officially comes out. App Store is the same, and uh, Game Center. Uh, this is added in the new edition. Uh, so you're going to see Snazzy, Game Center, uh, you can see your friends in a very organized, neat list. Um, all 53 of them, yeah, I have friends, not. Uh, you can see your games, your achievements that you don't have because you don't even play games on your iPad. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's all that iOS 4.2 brings to the table, but it is pretty much um, handy universally. Oh, how did I forget? Um, it also has printing. Mm, that's only the main feature of the whole software update. So yes, Eureka, finally, the iPad is available and able to print. And not just from Apple apps or for, from Safari or Pages, but from any developer that implements it into their application. So that is pretty handy, is pretty cool. Um, just in your jump mark book, as you would as always, there's add bookmark, home screen, uh, mail link. It's the same, they've added a print tab. You can select your printer and it'll go um, not via bonjour, 
unfortunately. At least I don't think so. What it is going to do, I have two network printers hooked up, but none of them are being found because right now, at least, it requires the latest build of Snow Leopard, which is 10.5.6. Uh, I believe it's a beta version of Snow Leopard, and I don't have that installed. Don't really want to risk it, so... I don't have a printer set up, unfortunately, but you can select the amount of copies that you want and you're able to print it. When you are printing, you can double click and uh, over in this tab or in this tab, you will see your print queue. Uh, you can manage stuff, change the drawers, change trays, a bunch of cool stuff like that that you probably wouldn't expect you have the ability to do. So it is a pretty good, pretty major little, pretty major little. It is a pretty major update. I am awaiting it as are many others. So this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy. Please subscribe and comment. As always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.